Hi, I'm Ginny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension, and it is May. I am so thrilled that spring is really here because that means we can go outside and start really planting all of our beautiful, tender annuals. Luckily, I have been invited into the Salisbury University greenhouses with the horticulture and head grower, that Rick Shaw, and he is going to show us all these beautiful plants and let us know what we have and where they're going to use them. We also have Teresa in the back. She's working on some of the uh, plants. It's not just growing them. There's pinching and fertilizing and all this kind of wonderful stuff. So join us for Delmarva Gardens coming up next right here on Pack 14. These colors are so vibrant. I love these. So these are vincas and the colors, wow, vibrant. That's why we picked them. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, um, this is the Pacifica, right? Yes. And you chose this because it's a better, stronger... It's easy to take care of. Mm -hmm. We can put it in the ground and forget uh -huh. about it. That's the best thing in the world. Yes, indeed. They're not picky little plants. They're, they're sturdy. Don't require deadheading. Don't oh. require a lot of water. Yes. So that's good. We need easy because we have so much to take care of yes. that, that we need easy. <laughs> For you guys that don't understand what the word deadheading means, it, you're not chopping off heads or anything like that, truly. But what it means is the flowers right here, when they're done flowering, these, these petals will fall off all by themselves. That means that these clean themselves up, which is really nice. I mean, like we, we wish we could teach our uh, teenagers to clean themselves up. Well. <laughs> that's another day thing. But I love the vibrant colors. So you've got this bright, oh my gosh, that's almost scarlet and this red with a white eye. I love that. And then the pink with a dark pink eye. Look at the colors here, white with a red eye. These are so gorgeous. So, and so th these love to be in full sun areas, right? They prefer that, but mm -hmm. they can handle some shade as well. So that's the best of both worlds. Not heavy shade, but a little bit of shade. Right. So if, if you were going to be planting these, um, you're, you're basically using this for a large, broad area, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I refer to these as billboard beds, where ah. you're viewing them from 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away. Right. On the edge of a street where you're running by 50 to 50 miles per hour. Sure. And it catches your corner of your eye and you're, what was that? You're like, the color is just right. all there. So it doesn't matter that they're all not all the same color because the different colors and textures all blend together to be beautiful. Right. Right. This is spectacular. Now, I love the fact that you've got these planted um, in, in three inch pots, which are really good. Uh, so when you got them, you probably had them as plugs? Had them as plugs. Okay, so you planted them in the three inch. These are so cute. Uh, you guys saw us last month when we were planting little teeny plugs. So this is what they look like a month later and they're full of roots. Gonna, well, you can even see the roots at the bottom. Isn't that cool? I love that. So here we go, let's take a look. Oh, pretty roots. When you're looking for roots, and every time you buy a plant, you should always take a look at the roots. They should be lots of them like this, and they should be white, unless they're sort of a yellowy color. Uh, if they're not seen or if they're brown, put them back. <laughs> Remember, when you're buying a plant, you're buying the whole thing, not just the pretty tops. So I think that's really good. But I notice how you've got them spaced. Yes. Okay. In, in order, because we're growing, we're not going to touch these again, aside from okay. watering and fertilizing. We're mm -hmm. not going to touch these again until we put them out. Right. So. We're not looking at it as we need to sell these and we need to display them mm -hmm. beautifully. We put them out on the, on the floor so that we don't have to touch them again. Okay. So we're going to space them. So you'll see some of the crops where the plants are very tiny, but uh -huh. they're spaced out already. And right. that's so that I don't have to have the labor to come back and rejigger them every time they get bigger. So we want to put them in all of our labor at the beginning, then we water them, fertilize them, and then we'll take them out once they're ready. That is awesome, that is awesome. And each crop basically needs its own set of fertilization right. too, so having them all together like this makes it really worthwhile. And a as you see in your garden, yes. you're gonna get little microclimates throughout the greenhouse. Yeah. So depending on where the fan is, where the heaters are, where the cooling pads are, mm -hmm. where they are on the bench, the outside dries faster than the inside. Always. Some are sucking water up a lot quicker than others. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to do 
We've tried to do a, a commercial irrigation system in here, uh -huh. and we found that when we do that, we get a blanket water, and then we end up with, with patches that die, like your farm fields. You get right. wet areas that you just can't grow anything on. Right. So in here, we pretty much have to come through and water by hand mm -hmm. in order to get those pockets. I have found that in commercial greenhouses, if they have the same crop, like yeah. for instance, the entire crop, uh, this whole, whole, whole greenhouse is full of the vinca. You could do that because exactly. it would be specifically for that. But when you're doing uh, different size pots or even different uh, varieties, yep. uh, sometimes varieties of the same species, like for instance, you have Pacifica, but there's other uh, vinca uh, cultivars out there, and it, it never seems to work. So you, it, by hands-on watering, you're making sure that everybody gets exactly what they need. That is so cool, yeah. that is so cool. Well guys, let's go ahead and take a look because I mean, this is just the beginning of the beauty. Let's go see some more. All right. Oh, I love these colors, wow. Look at the vibrancies. You put these two together, look at that, spectacular. And if you put the orange next to a purple like this, they actually look really good too. <laughs> Wow, okay, so these are the New Guinea Impatiens. Yes. I love the vibrancies of these. I think that these are really improved compared to they had them uh, even 10 years ago. Yeah. They are beautiful. So you're planting these in the shade? <clears throat> yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and you'll notice that the vinca that we, that we saw before, uh -huh. the color scheme is very similar. So we can use these in, a, in a, an area that blends from full sun into a darker shade. Right. So we're, we're looking at those colors as a, Complement of each right, other. a continuation and a compliment. Yeah. That's perfect. That really is. Now, um, I know a lot of people have been asking why don't we grow the old-fashioned impatience that would just be covered with flowers, and I, I guess the answer is we are still dealing with the downy mildew issue, and downy mildew um, will go ahead and grow on the underside of the leaf. So you wouldn't even notice it at first. What you'd notice first is instead of the leaf being bright and full like this, it would actually bend down like that. And uh, eventually, all, yeah, it would look a it'll, little bit like it'll that. It would wilt out like this. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. And then all you'd have would be a few little uh, miserable flowers and then no foliage at all. And you cannot plant impatience, the old-fashioned old garden impatience, in the ground. I'm still looking at hopefully some containers above the ground to see if that'll <laughs> help. But you know, the, the spores for the downy mildew are all around, Everywhere. so we're, you know, we're, we're crossing our fingers that they're working on varieties that are going to be resistant to downy mildew. But these, these New Guinea impatiens are resistant, mm -hmm. and even though they are not totally covered with flowers, when they bloom, how can you not fall in love with a plant like that? Isn't that gorgeous? Let's go see some more beautiful okay. things. I love these coleus. They are amazing. I, I love the colors, the textures, neat. So what is the vision for these guys? Well, the, the beauty with the coleus mm -hmm. is you can not only view them from far away in a billboard type of a setting, right. but you can also look at the little idiosyncrasies in each of the leaves and the <sighs> color variants, and they play off of each other. Yeah. So in some areas where we have people both viewing it from afar mm -hmm. and looking at it from close up, we can look at the splash from far away, but then also by interplanting with both texture and color mm -hmm. and with some other flowers that we'll mix in, we'll almost treat that large bed as a container that you don't notice those, those little things until you're right up on them. That's wild, that is so wild. Well, like with this one, you've got this beautiful coleus. You guys, take a look, they've got this gorgeous red um, on the outside, like a picote, and then the darker red. And if you pair that with this one right beside it, this green right here is the same shade of green that's on the outside, and then you've got this dark red vein that just sort of pops, and it's the same color as the darker one right here. So having them side by side, wow, is really great. This is so good. I love the creativity that you guys here at Salisbury University have, because it's not just you, you're the grower, but you also have other people who work with you about what their what their vision is, mm -hmm. and you make sure that yep. you, you provide what they need. And then different horticulturists bring in their own abilities and their own vision, and, and very much artists, where my style, planting style, may be the billboard style, right. viewing it from 40 feet away. Uh -huh. We have others, uh, Will and Julie and Sherry, where they will come in and they will see things that I don't see. Mm -hmm. So the more input 
the more artists that get involved, we actually play off of each other, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes, yes, and also because there's all, all of you guys, you can sit down and chit chat about different things and, and that you, your vision actually expands more, yeah. which is perfect, awesome. Well, we've got lots more to see, but I think I wanna see something that you guys have been pruning on. Okay. So let's go over there. Right. So I absolutely love the fact that these are gonna be these beautiful blue spikes. I love salvia, especially the annual salvia because it does so well. well uh, we have Teresa with us, and the reason why we do is Teresa's kind of in charge of making sure that the plants not only bloom beautifully, but go from maybe a slender plant to a much larger plant. Right. So why don't you tell us, here, I'll let you have this one, what's going on with these guys? So we went through and pinched every single one of these salvia back. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that when we put them out that they're very voluminous and not just a one single stalk with a flower. Uh -huh. um, this way, they have plenty of room to get sunshine and grow outwards instead of just up. Right, right. Okay, and, and when did you pinch them? About a week ago. Wow, so in a week, that just shows you how wonderful this root system is. Within a week, all this new growth is coming in. So when you're actually done, instead of being something this big, it's actually going to be twice as big? Oh, it's going to be huge. Oh, wow. That's good. Well, again, for the impact. Right. And it'll be in full bloom? Yes. Oh my gosh. About four to five weeks. That'll be so perfect. And it's just, I, I just love when you pick one up and you just go, wow, look at these guys. There are just so many blooms. This is my favorite because if that was just done last week, you can see all the new growth. So this is so cool. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and just move down and take a look at these absolutely gorgeous begonias because I think that they have they're so large. I mean, people grow those little itty bitty begonias. Mm -hmm. You guys have these in really large plants. It's like almost a one gallon plant. And the leaves are so big. These are my favorite. These are the dragon wings, right? Yes. Oh, cool, cool beans. So um, most people buy them the bright red ones. What was the reason why you got this kind of a salmon pink? Do y'all see those pretty salmon pink flowers? They're so pretty. Well, these were actually selected by Will, one of our horticulturists, uh -huh. wanted these specifically for a certain location on campus okay and to put with other plants where the pink would actually pull some color out of another plant with a similar pink color right okay so he's looking at textures the way an artist looks at a palette right and he's putting them together in the dead of winter picking these out plant them now or grow yes. them now plant them out this couple of weeks. Very good, very good. I, I imagine the challenge then is for you to find the salmon -y pink color because yep. the red is so much more popular. And um, the ones that I saw at Parkside were dark red and mm -hmm. also a brighter pink. So this is definitely a salmon -y pink. Right. So he's got, he's an artist. Yes. He's an artist with flowers. Yes. That is so beautiful. And I love the fact that even the green is a different color green than the dark red. Uh, so it's, it, this is back. <laughs> I pop. love it. Yeah, they really do pop. Right, come back in three weeks and you won't be able to see the pot. These will be so big and full. Wow. We'll send our students to come and water or fertilize, uh -huh. and, and they're confused because they can't find the pots. Right. Because they're so full. The plants will be so, so full. That's neat. So now, do these go out in June also? Or we put The limiting factor for when we can get them out uh -huh. is how much labor and the weather. So yes. ideally, we'd like to get these out late May, early June. Okay. But being a university, we've got graduation at the end of May. Yes. We have other events going on on campus that we're focused on. Yes. And we can't spend as much time out planting <gasps> that we'd like because we're focused on other, other parts of our duties. So we'll be planting as long as there's plants in here. Uh -huh. We're putting them out because 100% gotcha. of everything that we grow, we use on campus. Right. We also right. use our flowers at graduation to decorate the stage. Nice. Oh, I bet that that is spectacular. That is spectacular. And I bet you have to take them off the stage as soon as the quit kids yeah. do, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is wonderful. You know, and this is not like you would do a home garden because in a home garden, you know, basically we wait for the last frost date, which is like the end of April. So I always t say to people, if you're a little concerned about a last frost date, wait until Mother's Day, which is in May. And whereas you guys, it's just not the fact that it's the last frost date. It's when you have the time and the people. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. Now I feel much better about my little garden. <laughs> well, we've got some more colors I have got to check out. So let's go ahead and take a look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. These are just so beautiful. Oh, you've got them in larger containers. Okay, so this is 
angel wing begonia. Right, and you have it in a smaller container because? That is ac actually surplus. Oh, okay. Or extra. We're growing everything that we're going to use in a larger six inch pot uh -huh. so that we can get it large and full and ready to go. Right. Anything that's extra, we don't want to throw away. Right. So we're going to put them in a smaller container, save space in the greenhouse. Yes. And we're still going to find a home for it on campus. Very cool, very cool. So, Teresa, what do you like about the angel wing begonias? I love these where the flowers actually hang over and how vibrant they are. So we can actually use these a lot of times in pots. Oh, okay, so they actually a large pot that would be cascading down. Right. And so that the flower would also be cascading. That's beautiful. Well, the difference that I see between the angel wings and the dragon wings just, we just saw is that the foliage of the angel wings is so beautiful. It's so different. And you've, you've got a difference in color, mm -hmm. difference in texture uh -huh. as well. So we can play with these textures when they're not flowering. We can play with these textures from one plant to another. Right. Right, that's so gorgeous. Now, last year, some of your angel wing begonias had some beautiful silvery uh, markings on them, but this year you've done something different? Uh, just, we have to constantly be changing so that if you come and visit the campus from one year to the next, uh -huh. you're gonna see something a little different. Oh, that's good, that's good. So, well, also, that gives the, um, the artists who are the horticulturists a chance to play with a new palette every year. Exactly. I love, it. I love it. Actually, I never plant the same things every you know, when it comes to annuals because there's so many more things to see. So, and we're going to go see some more things. Come on, guys. You know, I really love sweet potato vines because they just, they vine so beautifully. But these, this color here is so amazing. And what, what is this one called? This is Sweet Caroline. Oh, I love the, the fact you've got the dark, red veins in this one and yet the bright bright oh my gosh chartreuse here wow isn't that gorgeous and then it'll vine and look how cool it goes with the coleus and this one is called wasabi wasabi coleus look at that guys isn't that cool how it picks up that green so beautifully just like it does in, in the sedum this sedum is called a sedum it looks like i thought it was an asparagus fern until you pick it up and it's much sturdier and it doesn't have the the little thorns Lemon ball, I just think that's so pretty. But so you have all these different colors picking it up. All you need to have now is the margarita sweet potato. Wait, and Teresa is gonna bring that from the other part of the greenhouse. Oh, we do have okay. Some of the, the lime green margarite. margarite. Wow. Now this one, because it is all this beautiful, gorgeous lime green, that gets so humongous. Now, you had to have this separate because it did have aphids. It did. So anytime you have a greenhouse, you're always on the lookout for aphids, for any other kind of bug. So it's not just looking at how pretty it looks up on top. You have to look on the underside to see, is there anything growing on the underside of it? And this is really clean. You can tell that there's absolutely no aphids there. But this is it's part of the job, really, it is so cool. And in the wild, this guy gets the coolest bug. It's called a gold bug. It's really pretty, it's really gold. Um, the only trouble is it eats the plants. <laughs> this is so beautiful. I just, I love the vibrancy and it just sort of pops, even on a cloudy day like today, this is like sunshine without the sun. It's so gorgeous. Now, what I like to point out to people mm -hmm. is we've got the very similar color mm -hmm. amongst all of these. But if you look, your texture, you can play with your texture in your containers and in your combinations so that it's not all about flowers, you're also playing with texture, form, and how you get the wrinkles of the wasabi, mm -hmm. working with the form of your lemon ball sedum. Right, right, that's so perfect. And then the uh, contrasting bright red and, and, and mahogany, so right. gorgeous. Wow, okay, we've gotta go see some more color because I'm now addicted to color. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Lantana because it is such a pollinator, a magnet. I mean, you have these out there and the bouquet of flowers is so perfect for every single one of the pollinators, whether it's bees or, or butterflies or hummingbirds, they just seem to love this. And this is a really cool, the vibrant color of it. This is called luscious marigold, wow. marmalade, luscious marmalade. Thank goodness for tags sometimes. <laughs> um, but I noticed that you have little Lucky, Lucky lemon, lemon cream. cream. <laughs> and it is so much more tiny and delicate, but little Lucky, you mentioned that it's, it's more compact. It, it grows more across the ground, so it doesn't get as tall. Oh, it's like a ground cover. Almost. Almost, okay. Whereas this is going to be 
bursting up and over. Right. So that'll be really cool. And, and that's what I love about this, the same type of plant, they're all lantanas, but there's different varieties that have different uses in the garden. So if you wanted to go ahead and do a whole monochromatic yellow theme, oh my goodness, you could certainly do it with bursting and cascading or quietly creeping around and that kind of stuff. They're just so cool, they are. And I love having them next to the euphorbia because this is so light and airy. And are you, Going to put the two of them together? These are for containers. Okay. And almost the way a florist will use baby's breath in a bouquet yes. to fill in between your flowers, mm -hmm. we'll do the same thing with these. So to lighten and brighten up a heavier arrangement. Right. right. And no dead space in that container. Exactly. Exactly. I guess the only other thing you have to keep in mind is uh, horticulturally, do they like the same amount of sun, shade, and water? Exactly. And that's the important thing, that this is awesome. I noticed you have some really dark purple leaves and dark mm. red ones. Let's go take a look at those babies. Okay. I absolutely love the color. This is a, called a Persian Shield. And look at the color of that foliage. It's almost iridescent. It just reminds me of, of uh, hummingbirds, really, because it almost looks like a jewel tone. And this, if you're going to do it in a container, is gets to be a very big upright plant. Well, how tall, do, I, I, it's like three feet tall, two feet tall? If you let it grow long enough, uh -huh. you're looking three to four feet. Ooh, three to four feet. So this, this is the perfect thriller in a container, which is really good. And I was, we were looking at different plants. So what would you say? This is- Well, we, when we order in January, we're uh -huh. looking at pictures, yes. either online or in a catalog. Uh -huh. So the color of this plum wine verbena yes. in a catalog looks very similar to the Persian Shield. But, but as we see it in the greenhouse now, <laughs> together alone, the contrast is a little too harsh for some eyes. Well, a little, the, the, the lighter center kind of picks it up, but you're right, it's a little different. But I bet if we paired it with something else. So let's try So this, this would be the, Thriller, this would be the spiller and... Adding something with a little bit of a, a blending okay. purpose. Well, this one does have the purple in the foliage, but I don't think it's the right one. I mean, this is a, a almost iridescent and it goes okay with the... No, this isn't good. <laughs> Let's go ahead. I'll let, I'll let you have that one back. I think this one with the purples and the lime green might work a little better. Oh, right, with the purple in the, in the veins. That's perfect. So here you have the Thriller. It's going to get to be three to four feet, maybe two to three feet. And you have the Filler, which is going to get nice and big and lush and that lovely lime green. And here you have the Spiller that's just going to cascade down. Absolutely gorgeous, pulling it all together. Wow. Guys, thank you so much for letting me play in your beautiful greenhouse. I have loved looking at the colors, the textures, and hearing the stories about how and why you're putting them together. You guys do an amazing job. Thank you. It thank really you. is really, really good. Well, thank you guys all for joining us for Delmarva Gardens right here on Pack 14. Pack 14.